Hello everyone, Shirley Peters here. Thank you for joining me. It's a Saturday afternoon. It's raining outside again. <laughs> we have so much rain now. And uh, I've got the heater going, the fire going in the background. Uh, puppy's crawling around, walking around. She was just there a minute ago. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being with me. And I'm doing watercolor. So I've got a beautiful painting. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> I wish. I've already got, uh, I've, I've got a photograph. So it's going to turn into a painting of sorts. And uh, it's actually a snow scene. I don't know if you can tell that because it's printed out pretty blue. And I'm going to have to work a way of making it look like snow. And that's, of course, white cloud above and a blue sky above that. So it's sort of a misty, interesting. I think it might be difficult. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, the sun, I think the sun's right down the bottom there. It must have been late in, the, late in the day. That's probably why it's all in shadow. So that said, I shall start now. I've got materials listed below, the art materials I like to use. I'm using Arches uh, paper, um, cold pressed. And it's not, a, it's not a block, it's just a pad. So I'm going to have to be fairly careful. I'm not, I'm not going to stretch it. I'm just going to apply the paint thinly and not over wet it, I hope. And if it buckles, it does. If it doesn't, you know, if it buckles, I'll start again. <laughs> no, it'll be all right, I'm, I'm sure. The, the brushes I'm using are the Art Secret ones, plus an older paint brush I found in my kit, Pelo, P-E-L-O-V-A-Y-O. Look, honestly, I don't know that I, I've tried to look for it, but I can't see it. Um, it's an Italian, it says made in, made in Italy, size 14. Anyway, uh, I might swap it round occasionally with, what else have I got here that's so nice? There's another fat one there that I've bought at some stage. And that's a size 8 Escoda. Now that's probably um, a fairly good brush as well. But this goes to show the difference. You can't trust numbers. Like that's the size, if they said that's a 14 and that's an eight, I mean, hello, they're both the same. <laughs> They'll give you a same, the same sort of a effect on the, on the paper. So you have to really um, be careful when you're ordering by the number. Try and see, have a, have a look at the photograph of the paintbrush and try and work out how big it is for yourself. Meanwhile, I shall, uh, I'll get started. I'll just turn the camera so you can look over my shoulder. So thanks for joining. Um, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That's, that's great because that lets you know as soon as I upload another video. And because I'm an irregular uploader, it's not the same time every week. And sometimes it might be a surprise that I've done one and you might miss it. So, and uh, maybe you want to see it. <laughs> anyway, I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera. A little bit nervous on this one, to tell you the truth. So I'm going to go all the way across the top here. Now what I need to do is get a bead. I want to build up a bead of water that I can work all the way down. I can see this brush is so old, it's losing hairs. But I won't worry about that at this stage. Okay, I'll just see if I can keep this intensity. I'll keep adding in. So what I might end up doing, because I want this so strong, I might end up having to do a second layer. We'll see. Now we're getting into the cloud. So I'm going to start adding water to this bead, thinning, out the, thinning it out now. Coming down to a very thin. Wash. Whiter still. Especially whiter over on this side where the sun is peeking through. And I'll go for a bit darker over here. Worried about those edges. Shouldn't have left those edges. Okay, I'm just talking to myself now, so let's see how we go. 
I'm going to get down to a point here where I want to mark in this circle of the sky, of the sun. I'm just going to freehand it. Some people like to do a, put a coin there and draw a circle or something like that, but I'm just going to be relaxed about that. Been quite harsh here. Quite a dark shadowy, and a little bit of purple to that. And then, a variety of dark blues here, which I shall pick out later on for the sake of keeping the paper evenly wet all over. I'll run that right down. Right. <laughs> oh gosh, this paintbrush is falling to pieces. This is why you don't use old paintbrushes, I hadn't realised. But what happens with little hairs like that is they will all just blow off in a minute. What I want to do though, before it gets too uh, dry, I just want to come back in and put a bit of a scumble of cloud here and there. Up here like that. Just using a tissue pressing onto the colour. And that just gives a variety. And I might just lighten it around the sun. Down into the earth. edges up where I need to possibly come back with more cloud. Coming in from the side. Hmm. So as the watercolour dries it always lightens. So whatever you think when you think you've got the right shade down below here, it's not going to be. It's going to be too pale. So I definitely want, this is all, is, is looking okay for me, but I'm definitely going to be wanting a darker um, a sky at the top here. And I'm going to put it in now while it's all still wet. So it might mean I'm going to end up with buckled paper. I could see that already happening. It's just one of those little things that you have to deal with if you're not going to stretch. I'm doing wet on wet now because it's already wet underneath. This is wet as well. It's really, really strong. I want it almost, almost black up there. Okay. Now take all the paint off the brush. Go back to water. And so I'm just going to run water in these edges to soften those up again. Don't want any hard edges in the sky. So I look at that, then I look at this part and I go, nope, there's some edges there. The tissue sometimes does leave a bit of a hard edge, to be honest, but it's fairly subtle. So I just run my brush around like that. It's getting there, I'm quite happy with that now. I uh, might have to get the hair dryer out and do a bit of drying because I'm going to lose patience with... I want to take up some white there. Okay, so more tissue. Lift out. Lift out a little bit here. Lift out a bit there. When that dries, those hairs will disappear. Not like in acrylic, they'll be stuck forever if you did if you lost hairs like that. The only thing is they might, to tell you the truth, they might end up causing a little bit of a line. Anyway, let's see. I'll just put a little bit of cloud there. Right. That's making me happy. That's good. I've been able to remove I hope you can see that. I was able to remove those um, hairs, but they did leave marks. So 
Well, the way I can solve that problem, by the way, I'm not worrying about what's happening down the bottom there. I'm going to come over that quite dark. I'm going to do another layer on top of the sky. I don't mind the fact that it's getting, it's almost getting a glazing effect layer on layer. I'm tempted to turn it upside down and maybe do a little bit more of a subtle um, join because I'm happy with the way that's all misty. So say if I get my water brush and I'll wet it now. Of course it's totally dry, that's not going to pick up. I could let that fall down there. Notice how that's not picking up. But this is where I can go back in with some very strong, try and make a really dark blue. Just for fun of it, I might just add a touch of warmth. Am I banking, making a mistake there? I don't know. Add more blue. Okay, so I really want to get it dark. So I'm just going to push into the wetness and then come across here with intense blue. Now, I need to soften this edge here. So, in a way you can see how I've been able to cover up those little glitches from the hairs that got away using that old brush. I'm just going to Come back in, touch a little bit more tissue here and there. Just keeps adding interest into a sky, into a soft sky. So it's layer upon layer. Turn it around. So because you can see how buckled it is, I really have to let that dry now. To stop any more. Make sure it's not too harsh. I don't want any more buckling to happen. And on the whole, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Yep. A bit at the side there. That's already dry, so let me get the dryer out again. Okay, so notice how much that flattened off when I dried it. So that's why you don't have to worry too much about stretching paper. If you're using, oh, by the way, this is not 300 dot per inch. This is, I mean, 300 grams. This is 185 grams per square meter. Dot per inch. I've been working on websites. That's why I'm thinking dots per inch. <laughs> totally different job. Now, uh, I'm going to freehand this area down here. The rocks are going to go in last because they're the darkest. The next grade is going to be the interesting patterns in this snow. So it's going to go, it's going to be blue again because that's the colour of the sky and it's kind of reflecting the sky. I might even try, the printout is showing quite green but that's, I'm not going to go by the green of the printout. I'm just going to try and vary the colour so that it looks kind of interesting from snow point of view. I need a nice strong start to this. So go like this. Thin out. Thin out, go big. Interesting, I'm going to add some different blues in here. I think that's the way to go. Now I'm just going to put 
shadows here where there's some sort of excuse me reaching across should have a, my papers handy but I'm not always organized lines going through here in a casual way. Pick out some shapes. Sometimes I feel picking them out afterwards is gives you a softer edge than deliberately leaving them out on the paper. So put the colour all the way across and then run the water or just a wet empty brush. And I say empty, no, no paint on the brush, just water. Well, not even water. It's been water, it's been washed and then squeezed out, so it's fairly dry. So I'm just putting some of those shapes in there that look really interesting. And now I'm going to come down. Once again, I'm a little bit naughty, not not going right to the edge. If I end up doing this a second time, which sometimes I do. I might tape the edge. I know it's going to be framed, this particular painting, but still, just going to add a little bit of interesting blue there. Now, this area here at the front, I'm going to go a bit crazy and just darken it off quite harshly. And while it's wet, I shall just paint back into that area. Maybe I'll come back over that again. So I'm making some free freehand movements that are not really related to anything. It's just sort of like an artistic um, folly to play around sometimes with a few strokes that don't mean anything. Now I'm looking at the painting and I'm coming, I'm looking at the photograph now and I'm coming back in and thinking, okay, I'll do some deliberate areas of picking out. Okay. All this dark area at the front, I'm going to put a little bit of black in it to tell you the truth. That's how dark I want that. leads me to the fun and games I'm going to have in here in a minute. I'm just going to dry this off now. I also want a really fine brush that might just be what I need here. I'm going to mix up what is almost a black, so I'll keep it over here on the blue side. I'm doing burnt umber and ultramarine blue, which are my standard, that's my standard neutral grey dark, when I need a dark one. So I'm going to just go straight in and make some rocks here. And sitting behind that wall. I'm just going to carefully put it behind. I don't want to spoil it. And there's another one. Now there's some magic ones in the front here. I'll pick them out. It's kind of triangular. They've got snow all over them, obviously. This, would, this is near Guthagar in New South Wales, Australia. And my daughter took the photograph last year when she was down there. And she's going down again next week. So hence, very good that I'm doing 
able to do this. Uh -huh. I think in the distance there's some trees. I'm going to put them in. Just like that. Because I know this area is pretty famous for its wild, gnarly, old trees that definitely have problems. They Like they're really half dead. Knocked, knocked around in the harsh conditions. They're just beautiful. A little bit like what I'm about to paint now. So there's a whole pile of dead sticks. Well, what look like dead sticks, but who's to know <laughs> when the summertime comes that these are not going to be absolutely spectacularly color coloured and covered in leaves. You know, now that I think about it, no, it's not going to happen. I think these are from the fires that they had recently or a year or two ago. I have a feeling these might be gone. But they make a lovely pattern against the sky. I'm just using the very tip of this brush. It's really easy, the blue and the brown. I'm just randomly trialling out the different, not too many, the branches don't come right over the sun so I won't do that, I'll just have them short of the sun. Could be the moon. But I can remember, I haven't skied for quite a few years, but I remember being up this area. It's very rough, very desolate. And, uh, but magic, artist paradise really. If you had the fortitude to sit up here and do a plain air, it would be just amazing. So, I'm going to do a bit more on these trees. Because this is a minimal kind of painting, there's not much here. To, to work on so much. So just by putting more more detail in these tree trunks, these tr branches, probably the only thing I can do. One or two over here. A couple up behind. I'll just make this one a bit higher. Well, so much fun. Okay, another branch. So I'm going to try and thicken some area out so that it's not too... Um, so there's more to it, you know, more to look at. You have to satisfy the eye sometimes, it can't be too realistic or somehow just think well what looks good what's going to be nice right so a couple of these very thin endings make them definite okay I think that's sort of got the feel there's some of them have bent over a bit more I must admit I might just try and get that feel of the bending like that. Going to put a bit more down here in the rock area as if there's a couple of rocks in front. I'm going to have to go back to my original uh, photograph and blow it up a little bit on the screen and just see if I can see if there's more detail in these rocks or whether I have to leave them just like that. You could stop at this point and say painting's finished, that's it, 
or like me you could just go in and see if I can find I, I'm sure if I was to rub a little bit of a, um, a wet brush over those I could give more dimension in fact I'll show you what I'm doing what I'm thinking of I'll use a different type of brush I'll just use a little plain sable I'm just thinking if I just put pull out a little bit of the blackness on these rocks Scrub them out like that. Just gets that three-dimensional feel to them. As if, if you look closely, you can see detail. On the whole, you'll still want it to be dark. That's all. You just want variations in that dark colour. Any thick, any thick branches could also have a tiny bit of pull out in the middle detail that clicking noise you can hear <laughs> sorry it's my I think I don't know if it's water dripping down the um, the chimney or it's just the metal heating and expanding okay I'm just going to now go and look at the original. I know I've got a, ra a ridge of light there and I'm thinking of coming in later, believe it or not, with some gouache just to give that te snowy texture as if it's catching the light. I might even just put it on that side of the hill like that and then bring it down into this area. Anyway, I'll just grab my computer. shop I think it is yeah okay so here it is in the actual on the screen which always looks different always looks a million times better of course just gonna go right in here and see what I can see no it's totally blackened out but in this dark cloud coming over mm-hmm yeah, there's not enough detail in this. This is the difference when you're using your camera and it's late at night. I mean, your phone, your iPhone. You can see a sort of artifact in there. But that said, I shall have a go at um, doing what I said before with a little bit of whiteness on this, just for the contrast, because it's a little bit samey. The colour's all the same. I just want to do something of interest. Put that away. And I'll grab out some white dis white gouache. And nice flat. It's finding the right sort of brush for something like this. I've got to really go to, I think this might be all right. Almost go to an acrylic brush or an oil brush that's uh, straight across. Oops. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm always getting caught. No need to go for fresh water. This water's thin enough to not worry. So I'm just going to mix up this white here. And you know, I might just have a play around on my on my paper just to see how I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to pick out there, that little area. Yeah, I think that'll work. So, the roughness of the page, oh, beautiful. Now I've got to go lighter on this side. Actually, want to try and get right under that, those rocks. And then I'm going to go just touch 
sin algo que de energía. A little bit up this way. So. Go to a soft brush now, a, big, a bigger one. A bit. Play around with this and see what happens. This should all just fade away into the blue. Just wet it up a little bit. I just want to add a little bit of interest in there. I'm still not happy with this area and I need to make that a lot darker too. Um, I've ended up with a variety of different shades, which in the end won't matter, but I need to knock it out so you, your eye doesn't go there. So I really want to come in darker. An artistic license here. I think what I might do is just another little Thing over there and then actually keeping it quite I'm going quite um, painterly I'm not doing it nice and smoothly but I think I might just bring that in that side darker under that lip, lip quite dark here Once again, darker again, down the front. Just for the fun of it. I'm just going to put some colour right across. Knock out that white. And make it bleed down. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay. I'll just bring you in close so you can see what's happening to that. Kind of becoming really misty and wet and interesting things happen. So basically I'm trying to make an interesting area, a, well a plain area, which it was originally on the photograph, not much happening. Trying to make it look like this stuff happening here. And I'm really pleased with that. I think that's working. And there's the sky still looking quite uh, cloudy. Okay. Thank you for um, sharing my painting of this snowy ski, uh, snowy scene. <laughs> Big trouble saying things like that. Uh, it's not it's still wet anyway. Um, I'll take some shots and put it up at the end of this video. So thank you, uh, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>